Hello, my name is Naoko Fukumaru. I am a kintsugi artist and ceramic restorer based in Vancouver and Poway River. Today, I'd like to invite you to Imperfect Offerings exhibition at the Richmond Art Gallery. I present over 230 contemporary and kintsugi artworks in this exhibition. I named the exhibition Imperfect Offerings because most of my works were broken or imperfect, and I transformed into beauty. Glenn Lewis and Jesse Birch also present their ceramics and photographs in this exhibition. The exhibition's core themes resonate with our journey through the pandemic, highlighting recovery and a careful return to society and providing a hopeful look for a post-pandemic future. I present my work in seven themes, Kintsugi on Japanese ceramics, Kintsugi on glass, Kintsugi on natural materials, Kintsugi on ceramics from different cultures and ages, and Kintsugi applied to primary BC studio pottery and their influences, and textile work, and installation using few thousand broken ceramic fragment. Kintsugi is a 500 years old method of restoring damaged ceramics with natural urushi lacquer and gold, which highlights restorations instead of hiding them. Kintsugi celebrates beauty in imperfect, impermanent, and incomplete, and has powerful philosophy. Like cracks in ceramics, our sufferings and history should be celebrated as important aspect of our life and identity. I was practicing 25 years for restoration of ceramics with European Hidden Way, and in March 2019, when I met Kintsugi, I was completely broken and bottom of my life because my 21 personal relationship just ended. Restoring, I was suffering with grief and restoring ceramics with Kintsugi brought light into my life. I'd like to share my stories and how I could overcome my grief through art making process for this exhibition. Kintsugi process is a time consuming and takes about two to three months to complete one object. For example, this Japanese charger made of stoneware took about two months to complete. First step is to mix urushi glue, mixture of urushi lacquer, starch, and water. Mugi urushi takes about two to four weeks to cure in specific condition. In modern world, we live in very speedy society. Everything is moving so fast. Instant glue, instant food, fast internet. We are used to everything works so fast and we get frustrated if something doesn't work. I learned how to enjoy the waiting moment after I started practicing Kintsugi because everything takes long time in Kintsugi process. After adhesive is cured, the filling process needs to be done. You can see all these dark lines here were filled with urushi lacquer mixed with stone powder and water. And after curing the paste, I need to sand make smooth the surface of the filler. Traditionally, we use charcoal to sand the filler because charcoal is harder than paste, but softer than ceramic glaze. So sanding process will not make scratches surface of the ceramics. After the filters were smoothed with the charcoal, I applied two layers of black urushi lacquer and to make the surface even more smoother and then apply red urushi lacquer as glue to add higher gold powder. The reason of using red urushi is red shadow makes gold much more bright. And when I use silver or platinum, I use the black lacquer as adhesive because black makes silver platinum color better. On purposely, 
I didn't apply gold into these break joints because natural color of Urushi lacquer goes very well with original scenery of this ceramic plate. So I left it without gold. This plate has a very special memory for me. My father owned third generation antique auction family in Kyoto. I loved spending my time going there to see mysterious objects and antiques to learn about them. When I was 12 years old, my father taught me how to close wooden box of this plate with fabric thread. And he showed me and he let me try. And I thought I did the best, but when he hold the box, everything fell apart and this place got broken. I was very shocked and shamed about my mistake, but he didn't blame me at all. Ten years after, I decided to study conservation and restoration of ceramics in England. I went to school in England and my father sent me a box with this plate and saying in a letter, now go use this plate for your practice. So I used this plate uh, for my practice of restoring European hidden restoration. And three years ago, I started practicing Kintsugi and I transformed this hidden restoration to visible restoration with gold. And I'm very proud that I'm able to embrace my mistake and imperfection and to beauty. And instead of hiding, I am showing my mistake and uh, imperfection to this plate. And I'm sure my father is uh, proud about. And I will talk about this plate. My parents were feeding me baby food with this plate. My father regularly brought back and rescued the broken ceramics from his auction house. And my mother was serving her food in beautiful antique plates, which were all cracked or chipped. So I have a very special memory and feel part of family because I grew up with them. I was supposed to be an antique dealer to help my father's antique auction house. And my father sent me to England with money and empty luggages to buy Japanese antiques in England. I came back with full of Japanese antiques in my luggage, but I couldn't sell them in Japan because I bought them with love and I couldn't let them go. So I thought I'm not good at being an antique dealer, but I still fall in love the beauty of na nature in England, I went back to England and then I found school where teaches conservation of ceramics and grass and I attended there and then I became a ceramic conservator. This base made by National Living Treasure, Kaneshige Toyo. He was born in 1896 and he brought back tradition of 16th century old bidden wear of Momoyama period to modern world. He studied and researched how the 16th century bidden wares were made and he started searching clay. He found that clay was coming from rice field and he visited all rice fields in bidden and started eating them because he believed good clay tastes good too. This is hakeme bowl made by Losanjin. Probably he was one of the most important potter in Japan. In 1954, he was invited by Rockefeller to hold a solo exhibition at the Museum of Modern Art in New York. He was a calligraphy master also. We can see how established and powerful his brush stroke is from this hakeme bowl. They are grass kintsugi, 
Glass kintsugi has a different effect compared to ceramic kintsugi because of their translucency and reflection. This piece here is 200 AD Roman glass. This Roman glass was used to be translucent green glass, but alkali in the soil attacked silica in the glass and made iridescent opaque looking. I used to work as object conservator at Metropolitan Museum of Art in New York, and I, I restored their Roman and Greek collection. My nostalgia made this idea of doing kintsugi to Roman glass. I inlaid emerald and ruby into small losses and embraced breaks with gold leaf. Their kintsugi applies to natural materials. These two pieces are emu eggs, and this piece has blackberry thrones inside of emu egg. This is 200 years old lacy mushroom. They are 50,000 years old ice age bison skull and horse skull and there are more many surprises. This CO chan shell was my first experiment applying kintsugi to natural material. My friend found in ocean and he brought back home and he found that was broken into three pieces. I asked him if I could use for my kintsugi experiment. He said yes. So I brought back to home and I left on my shelf. During the night, my two cats decided to eat them, and when I woke up in the morning, I found 30 fragments on the floor, and some parts were missing. I was very sad and shocked, but after I started applying kintsugi, I found they were more beautiful because they were broken more, and I could apply some stitching wax to the missing part they, they ate, and we can see through the beautiful structure inside because they are missing. They were kintsugi applied to ceramics from different cultures. This is 15th century shipwreck Vietnamese vase. This is 14th century tea balls from Vietnam, African figure, Tang Dynasty vase, 2,000 years old pre-Columbian ceramics. In our society, there are a lot of conflict between countries, religions, genders, and I wanted Kintsugi to mediate and make connection between them. Their Kintsugi applies to primary BC studio pottery and their influences. This is Shoji Hamada, Wengan, Bernard Leach, Janet Leach, and John Leave. I'd like to talk about this base. This base was made by Wengan, and he also repaired with epoxy. When I apply kintsugi, I normally remove all the repair, but when I was observing his epoxy, I found it's very wild and artistic. We know his artworks through his ceramic, but no one, no, no one has seen how he repairs ceramics very artistic way. So I traced all epoxy lines with red urushi lacquer and outlined with gold. And when you look well, his grays inside and his epoxy lines are communicating and echoing each other. This is a collection of Chawan tea balls. These trees were made by Shamian Johnson, and this is 14th to 16th century Korean tea bowl, and this is 18th century Chinese Tenmoku tea bowl. So this was made by contemporary Japanese ceramist Koji Kamata, and this is Rushi Li. Then here, can you see all this selection of the plate? All top pieces were made by Heinz Raffin, and these three are Samian Johnson, and these two are Shoji Hamada. He is a very important 
Studio Potter in Japan. He was. And you can see how the primary BC Studio Potter got influence from the Shoji Hamada and like Heinz there. So we can see their, insp their inspiration got from Japanese Studio Pottery. This is collection of teapot and you know me cups. Here, this is Shoji Hamada. This is William Marshall. He was a master potter, master thrower at Leech Pottery. And this is John Leaf. This is Mick Henley, Shoji Hamada, Kenneth Quick, Mick Henley, Shamian Johnson, and Larry Robinson. I'd like to talk about this piece. I gave name 15 seconds and 60 years. One day, Shoji Hamada had a guest in his studio, and the guest was watching how he decorates ceramics. And the guest said to Shoji that you decorate ceramics so fast, takes only 15 seconds to decorate. And Shoji Hamada said, to be able to produce and decorate in 15 seconds, he needed to study and practice for 60 years. So I gave him name 15 seconds and 60 years. And this teapot is also very special. This teapot was excavated by Wengan in 1978 in Japan. Before meeting Wengan in first time, I visited Hombi Island. And I knew he wasn't in Hombi Island, but his ex-wife, Anne, showed me his studio and house they built together in 1970. I explained to Anne I have great enthusiasm to do collaboration with Wayne, but Anne told me Wayne got cancer and he had been treating, so his energy was completely lost. And she said, very doubtful about collaboration because he has no energy. But this was my point of collaboration. I direct like to collaborate with artists who are aging or has disease or passed away. They want to create new work, but they just can't for some reasons. But me collaborating with them using their broken ceramics, we are able to produce new work again. So I understood my passion and she left to her storage and then she brought this ceramic with her and said this was brought back from Wayne from Japan and you should do kintsugi to this teapot and shows to Wayne. And I went back to uh, Vancouver and then worked on kintsugi and invited Wayne to my studio. He was very tired and he didn't want to come to Stranger's studio, but Goya, his daughter, encouraged him to come to my studio. And once he entered my studio, he was very fascinated about all the works. Normally broken ceramics are end of life, but all my ceramics are broken, but full of energy and has new life. So he agrees to the collaboration with me and we decided to work two weeks in Hombi Island in March 2020. But the pandemic came and just the day before I was going to Hombi Island, we canceled the collaboration. And then he passed away. But after, even after he passed away, his family is very happy me to continue restoring his ceramics. And I am collaborating with his spirits and producing beautiful wax. I created these textile wax in Bologna, Italy in 2015 to 18, before I moved to Canada. I played with surface tension using numerous intense hand stitching, which result in extraordinary micro texture. My thousands of stitches represent the inspirational transformation of tension and strains on our world to beauty. I had a very difficult time when I created these works. 
My marriage was not working, and I had to pretend myself that I have no emotions and feelings. This was the way to survive in my marriage. Creating these works was only time to be myself and express my emotions. And my textile works were accepting me who I was. Kintsugi and textile works are very different materials, but both accepted me and helped healing my wound. This is the installation I made using a few thousand fragments from old pottery kiln site called Slug Pottery in Roberts Creek. Mick Henry, he made Slug Pottery in 1972 and closed in 1979. He was one of the important primary studio potter who had apprentices at Bernard Leach. I met Mick first time in February 2020, and I regularly visited him to restore his ceramic collection and listening his stories. Early this year, Mick told me he is going to sell his land where there was an old kiln site. And I remembered that he joked to me that I should come dig his broken ceramics if I ran out of work. I had a lot of work, but I thought this is the last chance to rescue his broken ceramics. So in March, I went to dig all this imperfect ceramics and a fragment, and I wanted to present a dynamic virtual representation of my work that how sometimes start chaotic and ending up beauty. So middle piece, uh, just excavated and have some soils around the fragment. And the surrounding this soil the fragment, the washed fragment, and outside layer is grouped and partially assembled and filled. I wanted to show viewers the different steps of my work. And finished pieces are on the prints. There is another point of this installation is we live in perfect world. We were forced to be perfect and produce perfect items. When we go to the shop or gallery, we see only perfect things. But to be able to produce perfect things, there are rejections and imperfect items. So all in this room are imperfect and has some failure. So I'd like to be us to investigate why this plate had been rejected and why this one is uh, um, not able to sell. So, for example, this plate uh, has very funny textures outside. The purple slip grays, purple slip got bubbled in the kiln and created like craters because the bubble exploded and then fire captured the moment of explosion. And we can see so many beautiful textures and small holes and big holes. And I can see more beauty compared to a perfect plate. And perfect plate is too perfect to ask any questions. So I think there are many, many beauty elements inside of brokenness and imperfect. And when we put that parallel to us, like, are we perfect? Are we, do we have problem? Am I different from others? Often people think broken or imperfect or difference are negative elements. But in fact, if we are not hurting others or nature or community by being different, we should be very proud about our difference because that's become uniqueness and identity. So this is the message I want to give to the viewers. Thank you for spending time with me today and I hope you enjoy the exhibition Imperfect Offerings. I'd like to express gratitude to Richmond Art Gallery, Sean and his crew my collaborators and supporters. 
I couldn't do it, this exhibition without their support. And I direct to thank to Canada. Canada is an amazing place. I was traveling and working in many different countries, and I was looking for my place and my people, but I never found until I arrived to Canada three years ago. Canada really opened me and let me work on my problem and I'm now true to myself, I'm not pretending someone. And gave me the possibility to produce works and overcoming my difficulties. I will keep continue connecting a fragment, people and the world. Thank you.